and those are pictures of people who have gardened the flower beds and the excuse me and the beds and did some gardening in that area as well. And U.S. Bank, um, in addition to U.S. Bank allowing them to use their wall, they have also talked about, um, as Antoine mentioned, how to budget. And MATC has done some cooking classes. I heard last year they made green tomato chutney. So that's something they've done recently as well. Other gardens in Avenues West, 26 in Clybourne, as Antoine mentioned, was a UWM um, extension garden and the one ran by the Marquette students on 18th, on Wells between 18th and 19th. And Cold Spring Park, as both of Scott and Antoine mentioned, um, located on 28th and McKinley, it was established last year, June 2015. It's a city lot with a permit and <coughs> mug. Only green space in um, Cold Spring Park. And it is also the design of the garden, and you can go to the next slide. Keith is crime prevention through environmental design. And what that means is it's designed in a manner that it is to deter from <coughs> negative um, or inappropriate behaviors, which was happening, happened to be drug dealing and prostitution. So it was created in a way that it's open and visual and less of that is going to take place. Concordia. Concordia has the neighborhood house garden, which was recently, last year, actually um, on Earth Day. April 22nd, 2015, they had a large groundbreaking. As you see, um, Alderman Bauman standing right there at the groundbreaking. It also had Mark Baden from WISN TV, State Representative Nakia Harris and Evan Goyke, some residents and some guests as well there for the groundbreaking. <coughs> Martin Drive, we also so Martin Drive um, Garden is located on 26th and Elite, and it was established in 2009. This was land that was left over from the Department of Transportation as they built Highway 41, which is now 175. And they received funding through the Milwaukee Healthy Initiative and the Community Improvement, Improvement Project funding. And as they continued, they've added more beds, signage, informational sign box, art features, rain harvesting, um, pavilion, which is right here, and they use it to watch movies during the summer. <laughs> Other things going on in Martin Drive is Foundation Park is um, ongoing uh, MKE plays upgrade, and that is to take place in later, towards the fall, I believe, in October. And a potential garden site that they're working with, Mug One, currently is on 29th, excuse me, 39th and McKenna. Mail Park has well, located on 35th and Clybourne, established in 2015. They had a Kaboom playground upgrade. And so the Marquette University High School Fathers Club did some recruiting and they um, also did the fundraising for this Kaboom Park. And it was excellent because there was 200 plus volunteers for this. And there were so many volunteers, they actually had to turn them away. Some other gardens um, in Merrill Park are um, 32nd and St. Paul and Clybourne between 29th and 30th. And last but not least is Valley Park. So Valley Park is a little um, interesting to say the least because it has, a, it was, a, this wall here, excuse me, was created to help with flooding. So, it was to reduce the risk of flooding from the Nominee River. Recently, it was completed in 2001, where there was $12 million um, invested to fund that project for the flood management. The wall is seven foot, seven, excuse me, seven feet high, 800 feet long. Um, and the acquisition of 18 homes was um, taken to build this and make sure that it, it was safe for the neighborhood. The next steps are, I'm working with Antoine currently to identify other land in the near west side that will be available for more gardens and more green space. Working with some schools who are interested in green space in the, in the vicinity of their neighborhood and their location. Also working with some different residents who are interested, such as Valley Park and Miller Valley. 
in identifying other gardening and um, farming resources, some of which we heard at the federal debriefing. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Darian. Ben, why are you in the office of Washington are setting up? We we'll go for questions. Any questions for any of our presenters? Jim. Hi. I was doing? just talking to the gentleman that gave the presentation on the boulevard uh, drainage. And I'm stuff. gonna come to you so people can hear your question. Okay. But don't grab the mic. And I, can, I, can, I can just do it this way. Mm -hmm. So, Bob. I was talking to the gentleman here, and uh, the, the reason I'm talking to you is uh, we're in a historical district, Highland Boulevard, with the mansions and stuff on the boulevard and stuff, where a lot of these other drainage things are kind of, I'm going to say sort of going up to the cabin or something, the rocks and stuff. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if it was possible, and he even said it was possible, if maybe the neighborhood gets together, about doing different types of plantings like lilacs and hydrangeas and maybe crab trees to make it a little more historical looking versus looking like everything else that's being done. Yeah, and I said, yeah, it's a possibility. I mean, we've done that before, uh, Sherman. Uh, we're gonna be putting some on, on Terrace Avenue on the east side, uh, same type of thing. That's more of a residential area where you'd, you'd apply uh, some of the techniques with residential landscaping, uh, blending in with the houses. And, and so for your case, not a lot of flexibility because the, the plants that grow in those conditions right. are very rough. But, but up higher up from yeah, the higher drainage. up lilacs, hydrangeas, like you mentioned, uh, crab apples or, or some other trees that we could put in. I'm, I'm sure there's some. What's well, it's a long distance the boulevard is. So if there was a big, you know, from block to block crab apple trees in the spring, it's a nice presentation for people driving on Highland in the morning, evening, going home. So it's more of a. I'm looking to make it sort of so it's a little more visual, a little more exciting. So mm -hmm. when people are driving on Highland, it makes more of a statement, and you can offset the cost by different plants and stuff. Sure. Thing. Yeah, and we could definitely support that. I think Darian and I would have a conversation. We do that. I think they do that in the Garden District in Arnoldskowski's. I think area. make it look a little more Victorian, since we're you know we have Concordia there, and if they promote the historical thing, the tour, if it can look more historical versus, so sure. I don't say a Victory Garden, but right. <laughs> sort of, yeah, that's about Any other, one more question for time one more question from the audience. Jerry, you don't have a question? <laughs> There's like, why are you me at the spot? No questions. Oh, Joyce from um, Cold Spring Park. Had, people will be able to hear me. Scott, <laughs> before you start planting trees on vacant lots in these neighborhoods where there are neighborhood organizations, is, the, is it the intent of the city to talk to us about it first? Uh, it could be. I mean, if you wanted some op opinions on it, the, the thing, it, it is a, a, a tree canopy grant. So um, if you want to weigh in on, on species and stuff, the, you can. Um, it will be a little limited because we can't put in like Japanese tree lilacs that only get 10 feet tall and five feet wide type of thing. So ornamentals, there's a little bit of flexibility to get some more flowering mm -hmm. stuff, but mainly uh, it's, a, it's a stormwater canopy grant is how it was written. So. Um, and then as far as locations, if there's certain locations that uh, you want, spacing, I mean, those types of things you guys can, yeah, I'm happy to meet with whomever, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you, Scott. We're going to turn it over now to Officer Washington. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. My name is Ryan Washington, and I'm a sergeant with um, District Number 3. Been at three for about three weeks now. This is my second go around the District 3. I was here about three years ago on the early shift. Now I'm here on the day shift. Uh, right now I was just uh, talking with the, my new friend in the corner here. We were discussing the fact that all the avenues west and the near west side all fall into, um, we call it Sector 350, which I'm responsible for. I'll also be assisting with our community liaison officers and our community prosecution unit. And normally when my captain, um, Shante Boston Smith, is not able to make it, I will come here in her stead, one of those, hey, you go take care of this for me. <laughs> so today I'm just going to give you just a brief overview of what's been going on in the Avenue's West area from um, February 22nd through March 15th. We had approximately seven shots fired. And what shots fired basically means is someone in the area, a gun went off. We have what we call shots fired that the city is purchased, which is a nice tool. And it just basically puts us in an area where shots were being fired. It doesn't mean someone was shot, 
It's just a, a firearm was discharged in an area. Uh, we had four aggravated assaults. Those ag assaults mean that there was some, some type of injury, someone fought, some, it was an altercation, and most of those were domestic violence related, which means that there was someone who lived together, they know each other, and there was a relationship with that. We had one strong arm robbery, and we had, we had one armed robbery, four strong arm robberies, and four motor vehicle thefts. And strong arm robberies were in the area of 23rd, 23rd in Wisconsin, both of those were the area 23rd in Wisconsin. They were about 12 hours apart. One situation was an individual was coming out of their residence. Someone came up, came across them, pushed them back towards the resident and took some items from them. A second situation, a person asked for a dollar. The individual gave him a dollar. He was sitting in his car. He asked for a cigarette. As the individual was getting ready to give him a cigarette, they punched him and took a gold chain off his neck. So you know, what, I, what I'm simply saying is, Bad things happen everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're trying to be nice, trying to be cordial. Sometimes people have something in their minds that they're going to try to take advantage of you. That's exactly what they do. Um, the reason I'm here today, I mean, I'm not really going into a lot of detail about these incidents. What I'm telling you is the near west side situation with, with these numbers that you're hearing, that means things are going well. With the spike that we're having, which if you have been watching the news all over the place, we have a spike in motor vehicle thefts. The reason why we have a spike in motor vehicle thefts is because that's the thing that young people do. So we don't have a situation where people are leaving the keys in their car. Now you don't have to leave the keys in your car. They break into the car dealerships and steal the car. So you, so when we have that spike, that spike affects everyone in all the areas. So in those areas, we're doing pretty good. We, and we just had a meeting as far as um, our, we have what we call ComStep, where they check all our information for the last couple of months. And right now, we are doing well in all the areas. The only area we went up in or arsons, which we can't control if someone sets their house on fire, and the auto thefts, which we're trying to make a dead end where we have cars out there, we have additional patrols, we're stopping all the target vehicles, and we're doing all the things we can in order to prevent some of those things from happening. Now, I will be more than happy to answer the questions I can answer for you, which is not going to be a lot, because like I said, when you have situations like this, you don't go into too much detail because there's still a lot of things that are ongoing. I didn't bring any slides. I wasn't as prepared as most of these guys here were again because I've sitting here and listened to a lot of things and a lot of good information. In fact, this was my first meeting and I'm pretty sure that I'll be coming to more of them. So <laughs> the next time I come, I will, I will have those things with me in order to facilitate. But this is not, like we said, a crime meeting, more so a situation where I'm going to introduce myself. And if I can't be of some help, then I will try to be as helpful as I can to you. Two minutes left, and we know Ben can do an excellent job with that. Uh-oh, let's get this taken care of.